In the early 1960s, the sheer idea of Nissan building a sports car would have been unimaginable. But within 10 years, not only would they create a car that would introduce an entire generation and beyond to the pure joy of driving a sports car, but they would change the face of racing, Japanese imports, and affordable speed forever. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Nissan Z. In the mid to late 50s, Nissan primarily concerned itself in the American market with sedans, station wagons, and pickup trucks. And they called them Datsuns to distance the North American cars from the parent company just in case they failed spectacularly. In 1959, however, they first attempted to bring a sports car over, the chubby little Datsun Fair Lady. And it was named that because the president of Nissan at the time went and saw My Fair Lady on Broadway. And apparently, he fucking loved it. I love it. Despite being cute as a button, the Fair Lady sold poorly, and its engine was considered too small to be a sports car to Americans. While the 1600 was in production, Yutaka Kariyama, head of Nissan's West Coast operations, had been pushing heavily for an affordable international sports car. He championed a design by the head of Nissan Sports Car Styling Studio, which looked completely fresh and new. The car was designed to be fast, reliable, and relatively inexpensive to make. The car was called the Fair Lady Z in Japan, but Mr. K didn't think the name would translate well to the US. Instead, it was called the 240Z. In October of 1969, the 240Z arrived in America. The American version had a 2.4 liter inline six, giving it a robust 151 horsepower. It had four wheel independent suspension, a four speed manual transmission, and could go from zero to 60 in just under eight seconds. It was comfortable and futuristic inside, and also cost around 3,600 bucks. I would love to find a 240Z for 3,600 bucks. Within months, dealers could not keep the 240Z in stock. Other cars in its price range couldn't match the performance, and its competitors in performance couldn't beat the price. The critics and the public loved it. A moderately priced sports car made for the people. And in 1974, the Datsun 260Z arrived in the American market. The 260Z had a larger engine, 2.6 liters, but actually had a drop in horsepower because of emission standards in the 70s. It was, however, increasingly luxurious inside. It was also available in a 2 plus 2 for the first time. The 2 plus 2 looks like a hearse. Ugly. In 1975, Datsun introduced the 280Z. This was a North American special. The rest of the world got a facelift to 260Z. The 1970s were a different time. People were doing lots of coke, and disco was all the rage. Nissan went all in to cater to the demand for the excess, making a switch from sports car to comfortable tour. In 1978, the second generation Z, the Datsun 280ZX, was launched. It was quieter, uglier, and was almost completely new. The only components that had been carried over from the 280Z were the engine, the gearbox, and the differential. Everything else was new. From high-end audio to carpet frickin' everywhere, the 280ZX was a car of its time, but now it costs more. The base version started at almost 10 grand. Quite a jump from the modest pricing of the Datsun 240Z. The critics called it, um, flabbier. Enthusiasts lamented the focus on comfort over driving fun, and with it now taking more than 11 seconds to go from zero to 60, it was rightfully called a slug. <laughs> In 1981, however, the sports car under the shag carpet began to emerge again. A turbocharged version was released, and that brought its horsepower back up to 180. The Z was getting her groove back, and Car and Driver called it the most sporting Z car since the original. And in 1983, the Datsun 280ZX, along with the name Datsun, was retired. From now on, it was Nissan all the way, baby. The new Z31 Nissan 300ZX first arrived at American dealerships in 1984. It was hella 80s, boxy on the outside, and digital as fuck on the inside. The interior was cushy and fully embraced the plush GT feel of the 280ZX before it. However, this time it brought an engine with it. It had a new three liter V6 and a turbo option with 200 horsepower that went zero to 60 in 7.3 seconds. Purists hated the fact that Nissan prioritized GT aesthetics over sportiness, but purists hate everything. Normal consumers at the time responded well to both the high performance and gorgeous interior. Nissan rebuilt the 300ZX in 1990 with a new chassis designation. The Z32. How did it do? Well, this is what Car and Driver had to say about it. Let your eyes wander over the Z's sensuous form for a moment. Well now, Car and Driver. I want you to paint me like one of your French girls. <laughs> it was a beautiful redesign. It's actually one of the first cars that I ever liked. I was at the airport with my dad and I asked him what it was and he told me. It was one of the only good moments I ever shared with him. The Z32 was an immediate success. Once again, Nissan had set a new standard with the Z series. And this one was beautiful inside and out, just like me. <laughs> 
Since the Z32 300ZX was one of the first production cars completely redesigned in CAD software, they were able to cram an enormous amount under the hood. Twin Garrett turbos, dual intercoolers, and four valves per cylinder. The twin turbo variant had 300 horsepower and could make zero to 60 in five seconds flat, baby. Not bad for an extremely heavy luxury sports car. Nissan had delivered a car that finally got the purest and the high-end consumer happy. Motor Trend named it the import car of the year in 1990, and Car and Driver put it on the 10 best list every one of the seven years it was in production in the US. Adding a convertible option in 1993 was like icing on a very fast, very beautiful cake. How fast? 1995 Bonneville speed trial record holding fast. Comparison against a Viper fast. Ineligible for Le Mans after winning in 1994 due to the massive engine fast. That's fast, but it was not to last. The 300ZX was doomed and economics were to blame. While the Z had entered the market at around $30,000, it was now pushing 50 for the base. And with the yen to dollar ratio making things worse, coupled with the declining interest in sports cars, 300ZX's days were numbered. Nissan pulled the car from the North American market in 1996. And we entered a new period in America, one without a Z. However, in 1999, Nissan also chose to showcase a Z-Series concept car at the North American International Auto Show, but many did not think it worthy of the comparison. But it did have its intended effect. People were talking about the Z again. In 2001, Gossin made an announcement. We will build the Z and we will make it profitable. True to his word, Nissan once again debuted a Z car concept at the North American International Auto Show, but this one was bright orange and sweet looking. The Nissan 350Z was released to wide acclaim in the very next year. It was smooth and most importantly, unmistakably a Z. Front mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, the now familiar profile of a long hood and short deck. I said deck. All these pieces together gave the 350Z an amazing base price of 26 grand. The Z was affordable again. Just Z, you'll notice. The luxurious X was gone, and the car had fully returned to its roots. And it gained a convertible option in 2004 because, you know, hairdressers love Zs too. Critics and consumers loved it. After an engine upgrade in 2007, the car truly began to reach its potential, especially after our boy Chris Forsberg drove one, the three championships in FD, and a perennial favorite in SCCA by both amateurs and pros. It was so popular that NASA, the race guys, not the space guys, created a Spec Z racing class for only 350Zs in 2012. While the 350Z was good, Nissan knew they could do better. Debuting in 2008, the Nissan 370Z was almost completely redesigned from the 350. The weight was cut, the wheelbase was shortened, and the engine swapped out to the huge 3.7 liter V6. It was still affordable and looked amazing. And of course, it's a star of many Fast and Furious films. The 370Z has been in production now since 2009, and it has remained a very strong seller, albeit one that is now showing its age. Lucky for us and all the Z Series fans, Nissan is planning to showcase its new concept car this October at the Tokyo Auto Show. The rumors are to be believed could be around 400 horsepowers. They're also floating the idea of hybrid versions, but no matter what engine it ends up inside, there's no doubt out that Nissan's newest entry will be worthy of the storied and powerful Z. As long as it's not a f***ing SUV. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Nissan Z. Subscribe and comment below. What would you like to see us cover? How can we do a better job? If you're watching this on Facebook, go watch it on YouTubes. Subscribe to our YouTube, subscribe to our Facebook. Up to speed, airing every Thursday for the rest of my life. Does anybody know any girls who like me? Can you guys send me cool shirts? I'll wear them in the thing. Even if they're not cool, I will, I'll wear not cool shirts. I'll wear funny shirts too. Send me stuff. Cool. Dude, that'd be sweet if I got stuff. Right.